Carnivore, the world's number one selling beef protein, gives you the power of beef at the speed of whey. Carnivore is now available in the original pure beef protein powder and a new delicious RTD. Also try Carnivore Mass, delicious Carnivore Bars, and new soft-baked Carnivore Brownies. To purchase Carnivore Beef Protein Bodybuilding Supplements, go to MuscleMedsRx.com right now. Yeah. Whenever I deadlift it, I usually use the undergrip and overgrip. Does, mm. does it matter? If you feel more comfortable doing it that way, yeah. Um, I personally, nah, I don't believe in, I, I, I don't believe in doing that. I've done it. You know, over the years, I have done that. Um, but now when I think about it, more likely than not, when I do things like that, my expectation was then, or my goal was to try to protect myself, get leverage, and aim to move a more impressive weight. Hmm. Right now though, that should be the furthest thing from yeah. our minds. Okay. So now if we're talking about why are we doing this, when I do this, I'm thinking about my glutes, my hamstrings, my spinal rectus, and my lats, my, my, my back yep. development that can be seen by the judges from where they're sitting. Yes. So for me, when I'm setting up to do this, if you, if you can see me from the rear, when I set up to do this, I consciously start to become aware of these areas, my hamstrings, my glutes. If you notice, I sat down and I really allowed gravity to pull me down, pull my pelvis down closer to the floor. As I'm doing that, I'm taking an inventory of my glutes, of my hamstrings, this is different. Sitting up here is different from sitting down here. In order to be able to get down here, I have to contract my glutes. That means that I'm activating them, all right? So that means even before I pull this bar from the floor, I've taken an inventory of my body and my tools, my instrument. Does that make any sense? So as I come up off the floor, as I come up, if I'm blasting up off the floor, I'm not just coming up off the floor just to pick up the weight, forget the weight. I'm not worried about the weight. What I'm thinking about though is my mind, my muscles. I'm trying to make connections with these specific, I'm not just trying to train my traps at this point. I'm trying to call command, my glutes, my hamstrings, my spinal erectors, everything going up. The benefit of this exercise is not just for the sake of trying to pull an impressive weight to show the world how strong you are. All right, so forget the weight, take the weight off of it right now. Let's walk into this realm of concentration. When I'm on stage as a bodybuilder, the first thing I've learned is to tense everything from the floor up. So right off the bat, when I'm doing this, this is not a flat, just a flashy movement, but what that is is my ability to take my mind, become conscious of the floor underneath me, and flex my hamstring, follow it up through my glute, my spinal erector, slow down. My abdominals allows me to contract my, my, my lower back. Take inventory of my lower lats up to my rear delts, and my rhomboids and my traps. So all of that, I don't just do when I'm on stage as a bodybuilder trying to show my physique there. I do this here as I am working to develop not only the control of these muscles, but also to develop these muscles. Does that make sense? So right now, if you ask me the difference between underhand and overhand, I'd say if the reason why we're doing underhand and overhand is to move a more impressive weight, then no, I'm not gonna do that. It's not even a question or a conversation at all.
six. Elbows high. Seven. Elbows high. Eight. Yes. There you go. Nine. Come on. Ten. Let's go. Eleven. Twelve. All right. Go away. Now see just where you are with that now. See how, you, how that started to connect a little better at that last? That's where I would drop the weight and I would concentrate on yeah. trying to do 15 yeah. like that, yeah. like that. Cause that, sometimes we think, we set out, okay, well I'm only supposed to do three sets of, three sets of this predisposed idea. There's three, three sets of 12. And we get there and you realize, mm, uh, Yeah, that's when I realized I had to drop the weight as well. And then, so, so I could bring my elbow, yeah. Right, so that means if we already did, but say we're thinking that's the end of my training session, I already got here. But now I just find out that at the end of this, this is when I finally start to do it correctly. Yep. You know, there's another time where I would have stopped here and said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do four sets just like that mm -hmm. and give the, whatever I've done up until this point to the church. Committed to your own improvement, that would be the way to go. Yep. You know what I mean? Maybe not four sets, but maybe just, you know, another yeah. two like that. But at any rate, this is something I'm just trying to share with you because sometimes you can come into the gym with a, with a particular plan and then you get to this place and say, ah, oh, I just, but I just got it. Now, I'm able to tweak this movement when I'm doing it naturally in order to kind of feel my way into what I want to, what I want to, what I want to feel. When I see you doing this, I see you using a lot of tricep, and I don't know how you feel. From looking at it, the way you're doing it, I would imagine, okay, well, his triceps are working a lot more um, than I would want my triceps to work when doing it. How do you feel when you're doing this? I feel the burn in the, the rear delt. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do feel like a little bit of triceps being engaged. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, yeah, it's because I'm like kind of pushing forward. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I was also like trying to miss the, the mic. Can you feel it at all in your, in your, in your front delt, in your, your, your lateral head of your delt at all? Yeah, I feel it more in the rear and a little bit up here than front. Hmm. Okay. I mean, maybe it's because we engaged that more earlier, so it's a bit like warmed up, but. Hmm. Okay. Because you know, there's a, there's a standard way of performing this exercise with, uh, with an upright bench. I used to love, when I was a kid, I used to see a Flex Magazine workout. Sean Ray and uh, Boyer Cole and Anya Langer and Kevin Lavrone. They would use these Smith machines. Yeah, I feel it more in my front delt. Yeah. You do? Yeah. <laughs> That looks more like tricep to me. I would move it up a little bit more personally. Um, I would not think about going heavier until I was able to work this out. Because primarily as a bodybuilder, what a bodybuilder uses to be able to develop his physique is his concentration, his concentrated focus on each particular body part that he's training. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, when you get a chance to see him on stage, un totally unveiled, what you're seeing is when he took 30 hours in the week, concentrated on focusing his concentration on his bicep. 30 hours in the week that he, what it looks like after you put 30 hours in your week, concentrated on the development of a tricep. What it looks like at the end of a week when you've taken 30 hours of your concentration and focused it on your front delt on the lateral head of your delt, mm -hmm. on your rear delt, yeah. and apply that same thing to every other muscle group in your body. That's what yeah. a bodybuilder displays on stage or just when he's walking around, that, that, yeah. that's what that is. You're really not looking at just, just a yeah. body, but you're looking at a body of work, a body of concentrated effort or 
focused concentration, a concentrated thinking devoted to this. Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours of concentration. Um, so when we're doing this here, um, sure somebody might look and think, hey man, I want to see you move a whole lot of heavy weight. You know, how much can you lift? Impress me, you know. But a bodybuilder isn't led by trying to impress yeah. you or impress. The, a bodybuilder is thinking about how to apply this resistance to, his, to the desired muscle group that he's trying to work in order to stimulate it to grow. I think in order to do this more efficiently, to hit this your front and the lateral head of your delt, I think you need to move the bench up just a little bit. I think it's just I just have to take my hat off when I do ah. it. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Now this is where I want. I want it to hit right on my upper chest. Oh. Oh. All right, and I feel like I got that. For me, I got mine. Did you get yours? You gotta get yours right now. Two, two. I guess I wasn't hitting the target area because I kept pushing the bench back more because yeah, it kept hitting um, the brim of my hat. So when I took it out, uh, took off my hat, then I was able to get closer to the bench and then it started to target the area more. 15, good job. Now I like the way that looked better than the first two. Yeah, what I think it was think? my hat, yeah. But that was like, that's why I kept pushing it back because it kept hitting the, hmm. yeah, the brim of it. So now, taking from what we said when we were over there, I would do another three or four sets. Yep. In this groove, the way we just, so it's almost taken us a little bit of trial and error to kind of tweak this thing correctly, um, understand our own morphology a little bit, and work around it in order to get the right mechanics necessary to do what we're trying to do, yeah. which was to stimulate the shoulder, yeah, the lateral head, and the front head of your delt. Mm -hmm. So now, from this place, it took us all that work to get to this place. Now from this place, I would do three or four sets. Does that make sense? This would be a standard uh, approach to training shoulders um, for me with a warm up, abs, that floor routine, believe it or not, it may seem very simple, um, but that's been very, very helpful in helping to take me from practicing my game and my craft as a fledgling teenage bodybuilder, up through the ranks as a national level athlete, and then on to the pro ranks. Strong fundamentals are what's been very, very helpful in being able to take my game from the peewee leagues to the major leagues. So it's my belief that strong fundamentals can take you a very, very far and long way. So from there we went into um, those warm-ups for our upper body, also our shoulders, believe it or not. A lot of times people discredit you know, just how important that is. A lot of that warm up really um, helps me to address that. We did, uh, we went from there into addressing our shoulder training from the back. So traps, rear delts, you know, rhomboids, around to the front, as you see, we just finished here with uh, shoulder presses. Everything that we did is like stuff that I've been doing this whole time. Like it wasn't really much of a surprise, but little certain tweaks that he made made the biggest difference in which I can start to apply even more in my workouts. I guess also listening uh, to what he's been talking about uh, most of my life um, and really applying that and the philosophy of like everything, I guess in that way, that aspect, we started to connect. So in a way, like I'm not saying his workout, you know, it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be because like I was already applying everything that he's been doing. It's a very humbling experience to meet him because like what you see him on camera is exactly the way he is. Like he doesn't sugarcoat anything where, you know, a lot of people get very disappointed when they meet their like favorite celebrity or something and then they turn out to be a real jerk. But Kai wasn't like that. He really takes the time to get to know the person. Don't be intimidated by, you know, like his big muscles because, you know, he's just an overall very nice guy, you know, like uh, very knowledgeable, um, you know, someone you can really learn from. And because of his philosophy, that's what helped change my route in terms of bodybuilding. That's what made me want to become a bodybuilder.
through my path in bodybuilding, I found this quote where, you know, it says, we're not human beings trying to live a spiritual life, but we're spiritual beings trying to live a human life. So that made me realize that there has to be something more than this. And, you know, whether you choose to believe that or not, that's up to you, but I believe that there's something else and something greater. And our time on Earth is our experience and our journey for what's in the next life. You know, a lot of people can choose not to believe, like, the Bible and stuff like that. But what I like to look at it is an acronym for basic instructions before leaving Earth. <laughs> so, um, that's why I, I, that's what I applied and, um, you know, it really changed my life.